Right. So welcome back. Today is the 14th of January, uh, 14th of January, 2022. And we're on lecture two of CE 3007. So in this particular hour, I would very briefly go through this slide O2A, discrete time sickness. Specifically, I'm interested to, to uh, talk about the sinusoid. So you know that this is a continuous time signal because on the x-axis or on the horizontal axis, a time is real. And this function, for example, y of t or x of t, whichever you prefer, the t is the independent variable for the horizontal axis. And on, on the vertical axis, we can have continuous value as well. And this is the continuous time sinusoid. We then, uh, in the real digital world, we, we cannot keep all the values. So basically, we decided to sample the signal. So in between some time, and for example, TS, some between some time, we don't know what the value is. We don't care. We just sample every TS and we get the sampled signal. And so this, and therefore, the horizontal axis is discrete time because it happens only, I mean, if you can think of it this way, if this is time zero, this is time one time TS. The second value is two time TS. Third value is three time TS. What is TS? TS is the sampling time. And how big is the sampling time? Typically in speech, where you're talking on the phone, the Skype, the sampling time is about one over 8,000 samples, sorry, one over 8,000 of a second. That means every second we sample 8,000 times, or sometimes one over 16,000 samples. And for music is one over 44, 100 samples per second. So, so the time in between the samples is very, very short. Okay, but short in the sense of, you know, one over 8,000. It's not like picosecond, one over 10 to 12 second or whatever. All right. Now, if you want to store anything, you'll realize that even though we can sample in time, the y-axis, uh, it's a real number, and if a real number means you have infinite number of, you know, uh, values after the, the decimal, for example, 2.135, whatever, like pi, you have to keep an infinite number of, uh, what do you call that? Precision. So in actual fact, we, we actually quantize it, see? We quantize the y-axis as well into various numbers of, uh, we basically truncate. For example, you say, I want to only keep up to five decimal points, six decimal point, 10 decimal point. Once you do that, basically you are, you are making it not only discrete in time, but quantized in value. And this is what we are actually storing in the computer. All right, but in this course, we basically only play with this. We just assume that the quantization, which will naturally happen, is so small that it is immaterial to us, okay? We're not studying quantization effect. All right, so, so let's continue and we're going to, to study how we go from continuous time to discrete time. So I will jump across all this and we will uh, we'll begin with, let's say, this picture first. So, so I have, a, I can give you a function and I, the function says that when n is less than zero, so this is n here, the index. And when n is less than zero, so uh, it's going to be zero. So this is little n here, and this is xn here. So I'm going to put zero, minus one, minus two, until infinity for n. One, two, three, until infinity for n. And correspondingly, I can tabulate what is xn from the formula. So half to the power of n equals to zero is one. 
because half to the power of zero equals to one. So this is the value. This is half to the power of one. And then of course, this, the third value is half to the value power of two, where this is the two and so on. So, so this is one way to represent the equation, which is very compact. In fact, this, this equation is very compact and this is just nothing but a brute force list of the equation values for all n. Then of course, you can also put it like this, uh, an array or, and, and it is enclosed by a brace. But when you put that, you have no idea where is the starting point of n. So you need to put that little arrow here to say n equals to zero. And finally, uh, in the in the exams or in the quiz, we'll ask you, we'll either give you an equation like this, and we'll ask you to write the sequence, or we'll ask you to draw a pictorial. And this is a stem plot. A stem plot means that uh, that this is the stem we're talking about. Okay, and the values and the n. So if we will say plot the stem plot from n equals to minus one to five, then that's all you need to do. Minus one to five in the x range and these values in the y range. That's it. Okay, so this is what we're expecting you to do for the, the quiz as well as uh, the exams and the lab. Now, of course, we'll give you a more complicated uh, equations than this. So in today's briefing, I will talk about uh, lab one and, and what we are expecting you to do. Okay. So I will skip these guys. These are found in the YouTube video. Although this is found in the YouTube video, I will now talk about this in more detail. All right. What is the sinusoid? So we begin the sinusoid with continuous time. This is the continuous time. T belongs to the real number. Y of T also belongs to a real number, meaning that we do not quantize the time, we do not quantize the function uh, value. All right, so this is the typical thing you see in your, your high school math. And this is a cosine, so a cosine and a sine are all sinusoids. The A of course is the amplitude of the cosine and T is the independent variable, the same T here. And then we have two pi F here and we have phi here. Now, all this All these, uh, what do you call that? Parameters here have a name. So the first parameter is the amplitude of the cosine. This is the face of the cosine or the sinusoid, and it is in radian. So please, if you use a calculator, you must change the mode of the calculator to be in radian. All right, we're not, we're, we're not really, we're not, use degree here, degree as in zero degree, 10 degrees, 20 degrees, 360 degrees. We'll use radian here as in zero pi, 0 0.1 pi, 0 0.25 pi, pi, two pi to represent angles. Now, the important point of course is what are the rest of these guys? So two pi F T, what is F here? F is the frequency of the sinusoid and it is telling us how many cycles will they complete in one second. So if I have a, a, a cosine here, and I tell you that this is one, and then it will repeat itself, and this is two, then of course you will say that F of this is two, I'm ah, sorry, is it two? No, it is one, because it complete one cycle per second. Now, I'm going to change the number now, and this is the quiz question, right? So now it's 0 0.1, and this is 0 0.2. So the frequency of this signal is 
10 cycles per second. Because if you draw it up to one second, you will see that you will have 10 of these guys. So please go and revise your sinusoid and, and get these uh, notations and numbers correct. So F is number of cycles per second. Now, then you'll be wondering what is the 2 pi doing there? Okay, so let's try to remember what a, what is a, what is pi and 2 pi. What is this angle, guys? Can somebody tell me? If this is the x-axis and this is theta, what is the angle in, what is the angle, please? Could, could someone type in radian? Okay, I, I hope you, you know that this, of course, is, then you say that it is 90 degrees, but that's not what we want. Yeah, so we want it to be like what the rest of you guys said, pi over 2, radian. This is what we want. That's the correct answer. This is the wrong answer. Now, a quarter of a circle is pi over 2. Half a circle is pi. One whole circle is 2 pi. So, you will now understand that the 2 pi sitting there is to convert the number of cycle to radian. Okay, so now this omega, which is called the angular frequency, what is omega again? It is nothing but 2 pi f. It converts cycle per second into radian per second. Because why? One cycle is 2 pi, so we do f times 2 pi, so we'll get from cycle per second to radian per second. All right, if it is radian per second times time, so basically, it's, we are left with this whole thing is radian. So it's A cosine some radian plus some radian. So it's A cosine some theta, which is the angle in radian. And that's the interpretation. Okay, so I guess this is just a revision for some O-level thing. And we are done with continuous time. Now, we're going to convert continuous time to discrete time now. And how do we do that? Let me draw a picture for you. Okay, I'm going to draw a picture here. And this is the cosine. And this is time in one second. And this is A, okay? And, and now imagine that I'm going to sample this guy. So, so this is the input waveform. And then I'm going to have a, a switch that I'm going to close every time, every, you know, for example, I'm going to close it at every 0 0.25 seconds. So imagine that uh, every time I close, I can observe my input. And I start my observation at time zero. So this is time now, and this is the zero time. At this point, I observe here. 0 0.25 seconds later, I observe again. So where is the next point do I observe? Guys, can you try? So this is a type of quiz question, right? So at t equals to 0 0.25, where am I? Am I here? Am I here? Where am I to be observing? Oh, zero. Yes, zero. Very good. So I'm here because in a cosine, at 0 0.25 second, because the, the this cosine f is to one, I would hit zero. At t equals to zero point five, I would hit this guy. 
at t equals to 0 0.75, I would hit this guy. And at t equals to one, I repeat. So now it is obvious what is this is. If this is x of t, this is x of n t s. And n equals to 0, 1, 2, up to infinity. So this is in n t s time. Now, so let's see the math. So we are here now. Well, I use a notation y, but this is y at nts is y of t at t at nts. That's all. Pictorially, it is this little guy here, the sampling, the sampler being switched on. And when I switch on, I can observe the value. When I switch off, I have no idea what's happening. And you cannot assume that it is some interpolation between these two points unless you are given more information. All right, so that's sampling. Now let us then uh, go into what is yn, right? So okay, but before that we, we have to introduce the notation here. Ts, the time in between sampling is equals to one over the frequency of sampling. Now, to go from y of t to y of nts, I'm basically replacing t by nts, that's all. And I re when I replace this, then I can, I can move my TS because remember what is TS? TS is equals to one over FS. And then what happened? Well, you observe this equation here, two pi F over FS N. So we call this little F here, the digital or the, the digital frequency of the sinusoid. We multiply by 2 pi here. This whole thing, we change a notation to become small omega. This is n. Previously, I have big omega and I have t. As opposed to now, y of n is equals to a cosine small omega n plus phi. So the interpretation is this is in real time and this is in some digital time. In fact, there's no time anymore. It is just a sequence and it goes to zero, one, two, three. So this is an interpretation. What is the name for small omega? This is the digital angular frequency of the sinusoid. And it is in radian per sample. And now what is N? It is the sample index. So radian per sample multiplied by sample gives you radian. That is why this whole thing will work. You will become a radian, a variable that is radian. All right. So now we are here and, and you guys can read this. So. So these few pictures, right? These few pictures that goes from, sorry, a continuous time to a discrete time is a very important process that you need to understand very, very well, okay? Because once you do not understand this, it's very hard to go on to understand uh, the complex exponential. Okay, now let's play with this. First, I'm giving you a continuous time sinusoid because this is in continuous time and this amplitude is one for a cosine and I know that it repeats every 0 0.5 second. 
So this frequency is equals to two. I draw a green line that is smooth to show you that this is continuous time. But basically what I'm trying, to, actually what I'm really doing is I'm just drawing a lot of points in between zero and 0 0.1 so that you think it's a smooth curve. But as you know, uh, if you are going to plot something, there's, yeah, there's nothing. That, there's going to be some space in between. Yeah, but as long as you put many, many points, then it will appear to be smooth. Okay, so I have my complex, sorry, my cosine that is frequency two. My phase is zero, and this is the equation I'm plotting. Now, I'm going to plot NPS. So I must give you the sampling time, or I must give you the sampling frequency. Every one second, fs equals to 24 means in one second, I'm going to look at the input 24 times. That's what it means. So every one second, 24 points comes out. So how do I know? Well, let's take the green line and let's count how many times this happened in one second. So this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24. Yeah, they count wrongly. Well, you guys can count. Okay, so basically every 24 samples in one second. Now, so what am I going to get? What is YNT? YNT is nothing but these blue lines here, the stem plots. So this is Y of zero. This is Y of, what's the correct answer, guys? One over four. Yes, one over 24 second, right? Then this guy is, Two. Yes, two. Yeah. Why two twenty four? But actually, to write this, you should be run n times one over twenty four, and then it's equals to whatever values you want to calculate. That's the easiest. All right. So you now know how to get the blue line. You now know how to get the green line. And so now. How do we get yn then? So if you have given yn ts, how do you get yn? So what is yn? You look. How many points again? This is index 0, index 1, index 2. The last guy should be index 23. This guy should be index 24, right? Because it's periodic over 24 samples. So, if I want to plot yn and not yntS, then my x-axis or my horizontal axis is n equals to 0 to infinity. This is from 0 up to, then you look. This is the last element should be, I'm not sure whether I plot to 24 or 23. Okay? Now, let's, let's see what I did. This first point is this first point. This second point is this second point. This third point is this third point. This is the fourth point. Where is the difference? The horizontal axis. Because now the horizontal axis is now spaced by index. One, two, three, four, five. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. It's not spaced by time anymore. You have no concept of time in Y, N. Okay? So if you want to reconstruct YTS, you need TS so that you can go from this sequence of numbers back to time. All right. So what are the quiz questions that I will ask? Uh, I will ask uh, maybe things like this. 
what is the omega for this figure? And here, the answer is pi over 6. You go and work out why. If you give me in degree, you'll be marked wrong. Okay? So, every step, I am making uh, 30 degrees. So, I need how many steps before I make one cycle? That's the answer. All right. So, now, I have this. Any questions so far? There is a big jump from understanding capital F cycle per second to big omega, which is 2 pi capital F, the angular frequency in radian per second, <clears throat> to small w, small omega in radian per sample. So, so let's try, okay? Now, why did I find this value? Let's try. Cosine 2 pi f t is the time. But I am given sampling to be 24. So I would change this to cosine 2 pi f becomes n t s. But 2 n t s becomes cosine 2 pi 2, which is my capital F, n over 24. Cosine 2 pi over 24 is pi over 12. Is it? Pi over 2, 2, 4, pi over 6. Sorry. 6, n. So this is the pi over 6, n that we are seeing here. It means that every step that I make from n equals to 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3. Every time I'm making one step, I am introducing pi over 6 into the system. Pi over 6. Every time I'm moving pi over 6. What is pi over 6? Every time I'm moving 30 degrees. All right, let's look. In the cosine, I will start with the top. I'm moving by 30 degrees. I get this value. I'm moving by 30 degrees. I'm 60 degrees now. Here, I'm 90 degrees. Cosine 90 degrees, cosine pi over 2 is 0. Correct. 90 degrees, 120, 150, 180. I'm right at the bottom again. So now I understand the meaning of pi over 6. Every step I make, I am moving by pi over 6. Okay, so you count and then you realize, okay, this is what's really happening. All right, now, then of course, I'm going to ask you to draw for me different omega, right? Here, I'm using S degree, but honestly, you should be doing it in radian. Right, pi over 6 is 30 degrees, so that's the picture here. Let's try omega equals to... Ah, let's try omega equals to 10 first. That's the easiest. I'm asking you to plot a cosine and move it by 10 degrees at each index. So every time you move, you're moving by 10 degrees. How many times do you need before you reach the other side? You complete one cycle. So it's 0 to 35, right? The 36th sample would become back to the period. period. If you do 20 degrees, you'll realize that halfway, you have already reached. At 36, you repeat twice. So on and so forth. So as omega becomes larger and larger, we are rotating faster and faster. Okay? So that's the idea. So this is the interpretation of the sinusoids with different omega. Right, once you understand all these, let's look at the lab. Now, if you have any questions, please stop me. So let's go and... So you should look at the lab. The lab question has not changed. And now I will give you an example of what I'm going to ask you for the lab quiz. You have to do the entire lab. Once you finish the entire lab, 
you realize that I'm asking you to have to 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 work out the solutions with of many questions. You will notice that sometimes uh, then for the quiz, what do I do? Now, basically, I would change the equation. Maybe fs equals to 8,000. Maybe fs equals to 4,000. You know, I will ask you, what fs should I choose to get this y of nt? Things like that. If you know how to do all this, then the lab quiz can be done within 30 minutes or 20 minutes even. Okay, if you do not know how, or if you have not done this and go to the lab and try to answer this in three in two hours, it's close to impossible. So the idea is go and finish your entire lab at home, do it, and then when you come, you realize the lab quiz is nothing but the same questions with different variables, as well as some questions about the tutorial and the lecture. Okay. All right. Now, let's see. In the lab, I'm going to ask you to write a Python to generate some yn of with certain frequency, certain equations. So what do I expect you to do? So I'm going to mute people first. All right. Now I'm going to reshare my screen because you need to share the sound. So I'm going to show you my Python code. If you go to your lab and you go to intro setup, you realize that I have given you lab one example, lab two example, and so on. I'm redoing some of them. So now I'll go through. Okay, now question to you guys. Are you familiar with Python and all these things? Anaconda? Anybody here who have no experience with Python and Anaconda, please raise now. Okay, everybody have. All right, so basically, you are going to write very simple codes. You can use Jupyter Notebook or whatever. I prefer to just write pure Python code. And then we're going to ask you to generate some sinusoids. So the first examples. I would suggest you write everything as functions. So here is general generating the sampled sinusoid given the amplitude, the frequency, the phase, the sampling time, the start time, and the end time. And then in four lines, it's done. Okay? So I'm going to generate the sinusoid. So the answer is here. The first one is I'm going to do example one, which is going to call my going to generate this guy now then you see that i'm generating two guys okay so i'll explain why very soon so let's comment this guy out first and then i'm going to show you the answer on the right hand side and this is the answer i'm plotting a sinusoid and time so i'm plotting y and ts and then if i ask you to plot y of t so guess what how i plot y of t okay it's a trick yeah the green thing is the y of t and the red points are y of nts so let's go and read this figure properly x-axis is time in one second i have a cosine wave so this frequency is f equals to 1. Am I right? Frequency equals to 1. Correct. I'm plotting from time 0 to time 2. Time 0 to time 2. Correct. My amplitude is 1. Correct. Okay, let's change. Let us now plot frequency to be maybe, uh, how should I put it? Maybe 0 0.5. And I want start time to be yeah, okay, never mind. Don't change the start time. Oh, okay, cool. Right? Now everything is fine again. So what is the lab question? I'll change these parameters and I'm going to ask you to draw this. And then, you know, you sketch this and put it in your paper and submit. Now, 
What else do I want to do? Now, so you must be wondering, how in the world did I plot the green line? Because I'm telling you the green line is continuous time. But you also know that it is impossible to draw anything because for continuous time, I need to draw an infinite number of them. So this is how I cheat, guys. In fact, you see, I use the same function. One of them, I'm plotting what I need. The other guy, I'm increasing the sampling rate by 10. So what am I doing? I'm actually, between all these rate points here, I'm putting 10 points in between. All right, maybe I show you two points in between. Then you will see. Okay, maybe I should just show you this plus. So you see, red point, red point. In between the two red point, I have one green extra point. So now you are starting to see the curve. If I do it more sampling, three times more, Can you see now? Between every red point, there is three green points. 10 times more, it looks like a curve, guys. So this is how we cheat. So there is no continuous time thing in the digital world because it's impossible, right? So of course, once you have oversampled enough time, like 100 times, it looks like a curve. Okay, so that's the key idea. All right, so you have to write such code, you know, make it very clean and then you guys will be able to play with this. Now, I'm going to show you something interesting. So observe the green line, guys. The green guys is representing the true sinusoid. And now I'm going to change the frequency to one. The red points looks like it is a very, very bad version of the green point, but it's still reasonable. What about this? Okay, but to do this properly, maybe I have to do this. What have I just done, guys? I have asked you, I have just given a very high frequency signal that's rotating very fast. And if I didn't sample it enough, then I'm going to you know, get bad representations. Can you see? Or maybe I have to do so you can see that actually, if you choose the wrong sampling frequency, the red point is a misrepresentation of the real underlying data. And this is what we call aliasing. Okay, so now let's come back to our lecture. So this is aliasing. I have a very fast green line running around and I am sampling it still in, with respect to the green line very, very slowly. It appears like it is a sinusoid of a low frequency. That's the key I, what is aliasing here. What is in between the blue points are lost because we didn't sample fast enough. Okay. All right. So now I think I am done for today's sharing. So I'm going to pause now.